Today, I'm going to show you how to run a clean Ubuntu container instance on Azure, on which you can interactively run commands from its terminal. First thing first, obviously you will need an Azure account to follow this. So if you don't already have the account, please go ahead and create one. Disclaimer, following this tutorial will probably cost you 10 cents or so. Okay, log in to Azure portal at portal.azure.com. Click on this icon that says create a resource. Search for container instances, select the one from Microsoft and click create. There are a few things that must be specified. First, specify a resource group here. If it's your first time, just create a new one like I'm doing here. Very easy. Next, specify the container name. I'm going to call it Ubuntu. Then we need to select the image. Unfortunately, they don't list the Ubuntu image as one of the quick start images, so we'll have to specify it manually. Select other registry and type in registry.hub.docker.com slash library.ubuntu. This is the official Docker image from Ubuntu. Next, you can adjust the number of CPU cores or memory if you want, but obviously this will change the pricing of the instance. I'll just go with the default. Next to networking tab, I'll just skip it as the default setting. Next to advanced tab. This is probably the most tricky part. There are two things that we need to absolutely modify. The first is restart policy. Unless you know what you're doing, just set it to never. This will save a lot of cost. Next is command override. For the vanilla Ubuntu image, the instance will immediately shut down because there is no persistent process. So we need to give it a fake process to keep it running. Type in tail hyphen F slash dev slash null in quotes with commas in between. Next up is tag. Um, there's nothing to modify. And finally, we are ready to create this instance. We can quickly review and verify the image, restart policy and command override. Okay, finally, let's create this. Now it will take a minute or so to deploy. We can go back to the portal home and container instances, and we should see the instance pop up. I can click it to see what the status is. You can refresh the status by clicking this button. If everything goes well, then we should see the status changing to running. Okay, so this is how we create Ubuntu container instance from the portal. Now we need to attach to our container so that we can interact with it. For that, we need to open up terminal and run Azure command line interface. If you don't already have it installed, go ahead and install it. I'll have instructions in the description below. The first thing with the Azure CLI or Azure command line interface is to log in. For that, simply type in az login and follow the instruction. Once you're logged in, you're now ready to attach to the container by executing the following command, az container exec hyphen g linux hyphen n ubuntu double hyphen exec hyphen command quote slash bean slash bash quote here hyphen g stands for the resource group which i created a new one and named it as linux hyphen n stands for the name of the container which i set to ubuntu and lastly hyphen hyphen exec hyphen command lets you run bash interactively. If everything goes well, then you should be inside the Ubuntu container instance. I can see the file system here and it does indeed look like Linux. Let me run lsb release to see which Linux I have. Oh, I don't have it installed on this instance. So let me first install this. And once it's done, finally, I can confirm this is Ubuntu. To exit from the container instance, just type exit. Okay, now don't just stop here because your container instance is still running and this is incurring cost to your Azure account. When you're done with your instance, you must stop it. You can easily do that from the portal, but here, let me show you how to do this from the Azure CLI. 
type in az container stop and specify the resource group and container name as before. So that stops the container. Make sure to always stop the container when you're done with it. When you want to restart it, you can easily do this from the portal or from Azure CLI via the command start. This will again take some time to deploy the instance. By the way, unlike Docker, your container instance here is completely stateless. That is, if you stop it, then you lose all the changes you made. To demonstrate this, I just restarted the same container and let me type in LSB release again. As you can see here, it says it's not installed, although I installed it before I stopped the instance. So if you want an instance where you can keep all the changes, one way to do so is to create a storage in your account and mount it and keep all the changes there. But that's gonna have to be another video. So let me know down below if you'd like to see the tutorial for that. Okay, you can also delete the container if you want. And lastly, I'll show you how to create the container via Azure CLI as well. The command is a bit long, but here we go. When successful, this should print out some log in the JSON format and you should see the state as running. Okay, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to stop or delete the container.